Welcome to Practicing Life Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Pitzer. Today, what a great topic. We are going to discuss how do you love yourself? Have you ever wondered that? Because I know I have, especially when I started my transformation journey. So I know I'm not alone because what is most personal is often what is most general. This is something that, that is with your subconscious and you know that we generalize things, but also something I learned from being in the coaching industry and working with Jim Fortin, my mentor. So I've seen this a thousand times that what you think that nobody else is going through or thinking about is actually what's on the majority of people's minds. So let's talk about it because at one point I felt like I had hit rock bottom. <laughs> and in that time, I, I started getting a life coach and I remember them saying, well, you just have to love yourself. And I was like, what, what does that mean? How do you do it? And I'm going to give you just eight really simple steps. Now, this is by no means a complete list. Other people are going to have different interpretations and perspectives. More things could be added onto this list. It could be organized in a different way. This isn't about perfection, people. This is things that I did in my own life that I know from experience have worked with for me and that have worked with others. So I will tell you one of the best advices I ever got, you know, as far as learning to love yourself is to think about the relationship you have with yourself. And if you, if you've never listened to me before, this is your first time. Thank you for being here. But I just also want to tell you one of the things that I, I am very passionate about and I care about deeply is the relationship that you have with yourself. This is one of the things that at a core level, this is what I'm working on. If you were to work with me, this would be the main foundation. And then we can address whatever else is coming up for you. Loving yourself for me is the absolute core to everything. So I can't stress enough how important it is to think about how to love yourself, understand what it means for you, define it for yourself and show up for yourself. And that is truly the best gift that you can give yourself, that you can give your kids, your family, because when you are loving yourself, you are radiant, you are shining and you are like a ripple in, in the ocean or on a lake. And that ripple just goes out and it spreads. Just like anger and negativity are contagious, so is love. And when you are carrying the source of love for yourself within you, and it is just glowing off of you, even people that you don't even think you're in a relationship with are going to be impacted. And what I mean by that is like, let's say you walk past somebody as you're walking your dog or you go to pay for gas. And if you are feeling so much love for yourself, that energy, that emotion, emotions create energy. Ultimately it goes, you know, emotions through vibrations and frequency and frequency translates to energy. That energy is just impacting other people. It's such a beautiful thing. So the first thing I would tell you is to acknowledge your needs. So step one, loving yourself, acknowledge your needs, and then find ways within yourself to satisfy them. This is super important because I'm basically, if, if you were, you know, one of the charities I support is a charity water. And so, you know, this, this organization is, is meant to help women essentially because their job is to walk miles Sometimes that takes four to five hours in super dangerous conditions, maybe with alligators that attack them to get water and to bring it back to their family and to their village. All right. I bring up the story, not, not to get you to donate to this charity, but this is what you are doing for yourself. You are building a well, a well of water in Africa, but a well of love within yourself. And you need to be able to keep that well 
up filled with love because there's going to be times when you are hit with circumstances that are, you know, um, even if they are unpredictable and unseen circumstances arise that really rock you to the core. And when you have that love there, you have something to dig into. You have something to fill your tank with. So learning to satisfy your own needs is really, really important not to be like just self-sufficient and say, you don't need anybody. That is, that is a different type of behavior, you know, and we're not addressing that today, but when you can love yourself in the good times, when you have difficult times, you have something to draw upon. You also have that subconscious reprogramming where you've created a habit. And so, you know, to do it. You know, for instance, I released my book, The Birth Challenge, and, you know, maybe that book won't set with every single person. Maybe it won't speak with them, but I already know that I am going to love myself. I'm going to have my back, so to speak. I'm going to be my best friend through everything. So if someone were to say to me that they hated the book or that it was just terrible, I would be okay because I love myself. And I love the way I think about myself. And I'm also, you know, just as a side note, doesn't really necessarily carry over to you, but I also have the belief system of love is giving people the free will to choose what they want to choose. So it has nothing to do with me that they're choosing to think that way. Right. So acknowledge your needs and find ways to satisfy them. So if your need is like food, right? You would go and get yourself food. It's the same way with love. If you're needing attention, how can you give yourself attention? If you're needing somebody to tell you that this outfit looks great on you, then learn to have self-integrity with yourself so that your word means something to you so that when you tell yourself you look beautiful, that that word means something to you, because here's the thing. A lot of times we have self, we have integrity with other people, but we don't have self-integrity with ourselves. So our word doesn't mean very much when it's spoken towards ourself. So when you can trust yourself and you can trust your word, then it has a bigger impact and it means something more. Step two, advocating for yourself, asking for what you need, telling other people your opinions, expressing yourself. I'm a firm believer that we're here to express ourselves. Now, your past conditioning, your past experiences may have told you something different, especially in your childhood, in your youth, maybe you were made fun of for expressing yourself. And maybe there's painful things that, that trigger you or come up for you. But when you don't actually express yourself, then you're not really being true to yourself. You're not honoring yourself. And this is where transformation and inner work come from or are called into action because Part of loving yourself is making your opinion of yourself matter more than what other people say. It is also letting go of expecting other people to behave and act in another way. All right, we're getting a little off topic. So step three, setting up boundaries. Having boundaries is really one of the best ways that you can love yourself because it's, it's saying to yourself what you will tolerate and what you won't tolerate. It's understanding what works for you and what doesn't work for you. It has nothing to do with the other person, because if you do anything to the other person, that is just control It has everything to do with you. So let me give you a, for instance. I had a party at my house. I let everybody know to come over at four 30 that I had a couple of things to do, you know, but we should be eating within, you know, maybe 15, 30 minutes of, you know, arrive time. 
This was well communicated. So at 4.30, people came over. I was still wrapping up touches. I was getting everything ready as far as like setting the plates up, putting the food in the order so it makes sense, right? I just have final touches to do. Well, one of my uh, visitors decided that she was hungry. She was hungry right then and right there. And that she was going to eat the food, despite the fact that I hadn't announced that the food was ready. And so she grabbed one of the plates that I had setting out and she started to get some of the, the meat. And as she was working her way down the line, she started to complain towards me that I don't have the spoon ready. Now I had already told her when I saw her grab the plate that the food wasn't hundred percent ready. I just needed five more minutes. And then she responded that she was hungry now and that she hadn't ate all day and that she was going to eat. Right. So now when we think about boundaries, I could say, well, I could name call her or I could do all these things. That's not the type of person I am. Right. I don't even go there. Right. I let this person know, like in step one, I'm advocating for myself. I'm acknowledging my needs. So those are the first two steps, right? So I'm acknowledging that I need five more minutes. I'm communicating what I need. I'm letting people know. And this person is choosing to ignore those. So I set up a boundary with myself, right? I can't control her behavior. I can't stop her, but I went ahead and did what I needed to do. I announced everybody could eat. And then I let myself know that next time this person will not be invited over because that is my boundary. I can't control her. I couldn't stop her from eating. I could, but that is not advisable. <laughs> Definitely not advisable people. Controlling people is never advisable. So, you know, I already set up a boundary with myself. It has nothing to do with her. I didn't go to her and have a conversation and say, Hey, by the way, you know, your behavior resulted in the fact that I'm not inviting you again in the future. This is all within me, right? I didn't like being rushed. I didn't like being told, you know, I didn't like the fact that other people were just as hungry, you know, like, so these are all things coming up for me in order to honor myself and to love myself. I don't want to be put in that situation again. And this person is no longer invited over for any time I am serving food, right? You could set it up all sorts of ways. You could say that you're going to tell that person to come an hour or two later. You could say whatever you want because it's your boundaries, right? I still chose the boundary that works for me. Now I don't have to worry about this condition. So you acknowledge what your needs are, you advocate for yourself, you set up boundaries. A fourth step is to make yourself a priority. And I mean this every single day, whatever it may be. For me, it is setting in quiet time. So this is like an unbreakable oath to myself, right? I love myself enough that I'm going to sit quietly and find peace within myself for a couple of minutes every single day. And it's going to look differently for every single person. Maybe sitting in quiet time, it sounds like a nightmare for you, you know, but maybe yours is, uh, you know, doing some other type of activity. Maybe it's like knitting, maybe it's coloring, maybe it's painting, maybe it's going for a walk, like whatever it is that is self-care for you. But I would advise on this one that it is something that you do solo because I, I want you to work from, you can take care of it from yourself. Now I know that there's people out there that are very extrovert. And so for them, maybe it's making other people laugh, but then you're relying on somebody else to, you know, provide the laugh. Or if you are somebody who loves to have a, you know, conversation, then you are relying on somebody else to be available and to respond to you the way that you want them to respond. So when I say make yourself a priority for step four, I would specifically ask that it is something that you can do on your own. That's something that makes you feel good about yourself. And it, you decide, you decide how much time that's going to be. Is it going to be five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 30 minutes? Is it going to be an hour, three hours? What do you need? And then I would ask you to commit to that something daily that you do for yourself. Maybe it is drinking coffee by yourself on your porch or your patio, right? Whatever it is 
that supports you, that makes you feel good. All right. Make yourself a priority and let it be unbreakable, meaning that you're going to do it no matter what. I have to tell my kids, like when I'm meditating and it's on the weekend, I let them know I'm going to go meditate. I can't tell you how often my kids will come in. And after I've let them know I'm meditating, they will come in and they will ask me a question. They will ask for something, you know, they will try to make something emergency because they are just testing me, but I am resolved and I let them know if I'm, if I'm kind enough to even acknowledge them because half the time I don't, because they know, and they're making this choice and it has nothing to do with me. And this is my time, right? But there are times when I will say, you know, when I'm done meditating, I will talk to you, right? They don't get that time. It is for me. I have that boundary. And I may, when I, when I'm giving you the example of, I may address them. That means I may be willing to reinforce that boundary, but even if I'm not, even if I choose to, you know what, I'm going to sit in this meditation and I'm going to stay here and they're going to run around my room and try to make a bunch of havoc, whatever. I can reset up my boundary on that. Just so you know, I can reset up my boundary on that, that no one is to come into my bedroom. I am meditating, you know, like whatever it is, you're always asking yourself, what do you need? Advocating for your needs. So I would tell my family, Hey, when I'm meditating, this is my time. This is when I'm going to do it. I expect to be alone. This is my boundary. You can reinforce it. You can ignore it, whatever it is, go for it because that is part of loving yourself. Step five, be curious on what brings you joy. This is one of the, the the very beginning stages of helping somebody with their relationship with themselves, because often people aren't even aware of what they want. And they're certainly not aware of what brings them joy. I, I understand. I see it. I was there once too. And that's why step five is about being curious and uh, bringing awareness. So taking enough time to pause and say, wow, that made me like happy, like mental note that made me happy. You know, would it make me happy if I did it again? You know, cause there's all sorts of things that play into this, you know, So maybe it makes you happy this one time, but then you do it again and it doesn't make you happy. So looking at it and asking yourself, well, why did it make me happy this time, but not the next time? Do I need more space between it? Was it something preceding it? So really getting curious about who you are and what really is going on with yourself. So if you do find something that brings you joy, then you follow that joy and you do it again. So you know, for instance, I didn't know that I loved to hike. I went hiking one day and I was like, man, this was really great. This was peaceful. I went again and had the same experience. I've gone multiple times since, you know, I know now that I don't like to go after the rain. I don't like to deal with the mud. You know, there's all of these things, right? So I'm just curious and I keep my mind open and I try different things, try things try things because here's the thing, as you get older and you age, you get more and more into your routines and your habits. I I can't think of the exact saying that, that people say, but, um, you know, I guess can't teach an old dog tricks is one of them, but that the point is, is as you get older, you get so set in your ways. And that's because you stop trying new things and you stop being curious. And you stop learning new things when you stop trying new things and you stop being curious. And when you stop learning, you're dead on the inside. Maybe not right away. Maybe it's like a slow cutting off, but so many people are just existing instead of living. And, you know, they're stuck in their comfort zones and they're stuck doing this stuff and they're just resigned that this is their life. So, you know, one of the clients that I had, I was recently talking to, I was talking to them about trying new things. And so for this particular person, they, um, even changing their nail color was a big deal for them. And it made them so nervous, you know, that they chose a different color that made them feel bold. And and to me, I was like, well, that's one of my favorite colors. I choose it all the time. Right. And so I went out and did the same thing, right? I went out and got my nails done and chose the color that that's predominantly their color choice. 
And um, it was different for me and I loved it and I enjoyed it. And I was like, oh, I'll get this color again, right? I was curious. I tried something new. I opened up this door that didn't exist before. Now I know I like this color, right? And so the same thing for the person I was talking with, they tried this color and they felt like it was so fun. And every time they looked at their noise, their nails, so much joy came to them, but they wouldn't have known that if they didn't try it. And trust me, they had to go through the, the difficulty of being uncomfortable and getting super nervous that they weren't going to like it and that they were just throwing away their money. But all of that self-talk was coming up for them. All right. Step six, eliminate relationships with people who tear you down. Saying goodbye is something I, and I kind of view as like my perspective is that we, we aren't trained to say goodbye to people. And, you know, whether that is the loss of a loved one, somebody passing on the end of a relationship, we aren't taught how to be okay with saying goodbye. And so even when we recognize that there's somebody in our life that we're not really, you know, thrilled about having in our life, we have all of these reasons why we can't say goodbye to them. But what we're really not looking at is what is it costing us to have this person in our life and to have this relationship? Why is it okay for you to suffer and be in pain having this relationship versus the temporary pain of saying goodbye? So I would encourage you, you would do well to look at your relationships, to observe people's actions, not necessarily their words, because people can be charmers. Look at their actions. Look at how they treat you with their actions. And is that okay with you? Are you going to tolerate that? Because that goes back to step three and boundaries. Because you are worthy of being loved. And you have to start with yourself. You love yourself enough to not tolerate certain people, certain takers in your life, certain people that are energy vampires that just drain you. So I would really ask for you to look at those relationships. I will speak from my own experience that I actually don't have a relationship with my father anymore. I'm completely at peace with that. I wish him well. But the thing is, is, that relationship wasn't healthy for me. So it didn't matter that he was my family. He was a goodbye for me. I set my boundaries. I honor myself and I let that person go. And I know a lot of people struggle with saying goodbye. Why do you think goodbyes are permanent? Let's go with that question. Because goodbyes, even when somebody passes away, they, to me, in my viewpoint, they're not necessarily permanent. They are in the 3D world, but they're not necessarily in the spiritual world. And you may have heard st stories from other people, you know, about um, someone passing and you can feel their energy or little things happen. Like for instance, uh, when my, my cousin she, she passed on at a very early age, getting hit by a drunk driver. And so after her funeral, there were butterflies everywhere and butterflies were one of her favorite things. She often talked about butterflies and butterflies were landing on people's shoulders during the funeral, right? So even though that person's physical body had passed on their essence of their spirits and their soul still showed up in different ways. And, you know, there are times when people talk about like, like, you know, when your mother passes on, you may have your mother visit you in a dream or something along that lines, right? Like, so we often think about goodbyes as so permanent, but they don't have to be, they can be a right now goodbye. You know, so for instance, my relationship with my father, let's say in 10 years from now, maybe he's changed, you know? I would be open and curious to know who he is at that point in my life. But what it is today, I'm still honoring myself and what I need. All right. Step seven, change your self-talk. 
I'm always talking about self-talk. I will continue to talk about self-talk because your word is your wand, according to Flano. <laughs> I almost said Flano. Um, Flynn, she'll, oh, dang it. I'm messing up her name so bad. Um, all right. I'll put it in the show notes for you. But the point is, the stories that you tell yourself, the words that you tell yourself, the interpretations that you tell yourself, that is your subconscious most of the time. And you are going to constantly bring back into your life, your subconscious. So it's like you are creating your own story and your words are what is creating it. And you start changing your words and eventually you start changing the pictures in your mind. And then eventually you start changing your feelings around the words and the pictures, right? And then when you start changing the feelings around it, you start noticing your 3D world changing. It can be very slow. It can take years and it can be instantaneous depending on who you are, where you are in your journey, what your experience, like the pre-work that you've already done towards it, how everything is lining up for you in your life. But if you don't change how you talk to yourself, none of that stuff changes either. So self-talk, can you change, let's say, can you change your self-talk around judgment to observation? This is something that I learned to do. Stopping judging myself and just look at it from, okay, you know what? This is what I need to learn. This is what I want to do next time. I love myself. I have my back, right? Showing myself compassion and not bringing up shame and guilt and all of these things, not berating myself, not beating myself up, not mentally punishing myself right? This is part of loving yourself is just to change that judgment to observation, you know, creating that foundation of my word means something. And so when I say something like I will do better next time, trusting my own word, trusting my own feelings. Okay. So step eight is going to be about practicing compassion towards yourself at all times, at all times. You don't have to be your parent towards yourself. Let me see if I can say that differently. If your parents criticized you for your grades, that they weren't good enough and that you can do better, if they criticized you for how you performed in your sports or your art or whatever was important to them, you don't have to carry on that tradition for them. Instead, you can show yourself compassion. You can go back to step one and acknowledge your needs. Do you have all the resources that you need to be able to support yourself in this? And if you don't have those resources, step two, advocate yourself, ask for what you need. Tell others what you need. Look for the needs to be met within yourself always, but it's okay to ask for what you need. All right, practicing compassion towards your body. It's okay to look at your body and especially for all my women out there that want to lose weight, it is okay to want to lose more weight and still accept yourself for where you are right now. Where you are right now is exactly where you need to be and you really can't change it because you are where you are. It is what it is. So you can choose, you can choose to hate it, to fight it, to judge it, to be mean to it, to criticize it, or you can choose to love yourself and accept yourself and make a deal with yourself to work on whatever it is that you want to work on and show up for yourself. If I could add a step nine, which I've already kind of sprinkled into this is to have self-integrity with yourself, to trust your word to trust your body, to trust the feelings that are coming up for you. They're coming up for a reason. Uh, you know, there's a book out there called Your Body Keeps Score. And the thing about it is, is all those emotions that you're experiencing, if you don't go through that process of accepting it, loving it, 
having curiosity around it, having awareness around it. Sometimes that energy gets stuck and it stays there. And you just carry it around like this imaginary backpack on your back with like a rock, super heavy, small and heavy. And you're just carrying around this emotion and you carry it around so long, you forget about it. Like in the movie or in the TV show, The Biggest Losers, at one point they do a dramatic demonstration where they take the daily foods that the people eat that are on the show and they lay it out on a table with the amount of weight their body is. So if they weigh 300 pounds, there's 300, you know, pounds of ice cream, chips, um, chicken wings, whatever it is that they eat are on the table, right? And it's a dramatic demonstration. And that's kind of what I'm asking you to do is envisionalize the emotions that you're just carrying around you that are like a heavy, heavy rock on your back. And you've been carrying around so long, you don't even know it. And just like in the show, The Biggest Loser, at the end, when they look at all the weight that they lost, you know, they'll have them like maybe carry a weight to resemble the weight that they lost. If they lost, you know, 35 pounds and they're carrying around a 35 pound weight, or if they lost a hundred, they have a hundred pound kettlebell weight, you know, that they are attempting to carry around. And after they lose the weight, they're just like, I can't believe I was carrying around this much weight. Like, no wonder I was out of breath going up the stairs. It's the same thing. When you are carrying around these energies that are stuck in your body, you you can't even imagine the amount of weight weighing you down until you let go of it and you release it. So when I'm saying pay attention to how your body feels, it's not shove it down it's not stuff it down. It's not put it in the backpack as a, a backpack as a heavy weight to carry around for the rest of your life. I'm asking you to acknowledge that emotion. See what it wants. What does it need? Does it need a boundary? Do you notice how those are our first three steps? Instead of shoving that emotion down, acknowledge the emotion. See what it needs. Create a boundary. You know, ask yourself, what is it teaching you? Because your emotions are driving you, just like your brain is. They're all connected. If you haven't heard this before, and if you've heard it a thousand times, I'll say it again either way that your thoughts perceive your feelings. So first it comes with a thought often unconscious, which means that you're not even aware of it, which means that your, your logical mind isn't analyzing it. It's just back hidden. So first there's this thought, then there's an emotion, then there's an action, and then there's a result. Okay. So these emotions that are coming up for you, Learning to not to judge them as good or bad, but to ask them, like, what's the story behind this? What are you teaching me? What are you telling me? What do I need? What do I need to do differently? Right? This is all part of loving yourself. So I hope this message speaks to you. I hope it helps you. I'm sending you so much love. I will be opening up some spots for coaching. So if you want to go to my website, www.ashleypitzer.com, you can get on the wait list. You can also email me eventually, not right away. I will be opening up some spots to do some more one-on-one -on -one coaching. And so I would love to be able to speak with you until then. I am wishing you so much love and to let you know that you matter. And I will see you next time.